Well, thank you very much for joining me today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give a very brief tour of what we call the DFM library. It's free of charge for anybody who asks. What we decided to do, first and foremost, was to create a library that went one step beyond what we consider to be a good library. Because there are a lot of great libraries out there that get the job done. If the symbol's right and the footprint's right, you'll get yourself through manufacturing. But what we've also found is that a lot of people set themselves up for respin and unfortunately failure because of number one, they don't have their documentation ready to go. And number two, because some of the footprints that they create actually cause them more headaches than benefit. And we'll see a little example of this as we go about. First and foremost on the schematic side, obviously we're going to have those type of symbols that are going to be robust. Those things that we immediately look at and say, yes, we know exactly what that symbol means and what it represents. Because remember, a schematic tells a story, and how do you tell that story? Well, you tell it through the symbols that you put in it. But in addition to that, what we want to show is consistency in our form. What do we mean by consistency? Well, we mean consistency by making sure that the naming conventions that we use are similar along the lines so that, for example, when we do a symbol reference naming convention, we can sort this very easily. So, for example, in this one that you see here, we actually put connector first or discrete first or IC first so that we could actually sort through these very quickly. Now, we're only providing 34 components, but if you have a library that's got hundreds of components in it, that's going to cause some effort in trying to find it. And what we want to do is make it very easy to sort on it. In addition to that, we also provide a very specific description and we provide a very specific comment. Now, do you have to follow these things that we're doing? And the answer is no, but the reason why we do these things is for consistency. So when you look at the description over here, you'll see that we have what we'll call a very broad to very specific nomenclature. And you'll also notice over here that our comment duplicates our description. Now, why are we doing that? Because in Altium, the comment is the only parameter gets sent over from the schematic side to the PCB side. What we want is the biggest bang for our buck. So by providing the description, we will get that biggest bang for the buck because our descriptions, what we're trying to achieve here is what we'll call the essence of the component. Yes, you can call it the description, but what I mean by the essence of it, for the lack of a better word, is I wanna be able to copy this. If I sent you an email with nothing more than this description, you should be able to look at that description and say, I know exactly what he's talking about. And that's what we're trying to do with the description over here. We're trying to capture the essence of it because let's face it, information like this finds itself into various databases, especially a purchasing database where it's a lot of information and they're not gonna have a whole lot of pictures in there. So you wanna be able to look at a specific line of information and know by that one description that you know exactly what's going on with it. In addition to that, we've also provided a number of different parameters. These are the kind of parameters that you would expect to see in a bill of materials. These are also static parameters. The information here generally will stay the same today, tomorrow, 10 years from now. The only one that might have a little bit of a change to it is the one that's called status. And we do believe here at 9.connects that if you have a library and a part goes obsolete, that you want to mark it as such, but you want to leave it in the library because parts that go obsolete have this odd tendency of finding themselves back into a library system. So that's probably the only one that probably will need to have some update at some point in time. But other than that, the rest of the information is very static. All right, let's take a look here at the footprints. And what are we trying to do with the footprints? Well, in the footprints, for example, we're trying to show those things that could cause some problems down the road. Here's an example of a component that initially, and let's just turn this off here for a moment, that was initially recommended that they have a heat pad in here, so obviously the part runs hot, and they wanted you put the vias within the pad itself, which kind of makes sense from a thermal point of view. You want to take that heat, you want to send it through the vias, you want to send it to one of the planes and draw out the heat as much as possible. That's not a problem, but if you don't understand the assembly process, what you may be creating is something called a via and pad, and that is an expensive process to work out or work through. So what we did here was take a look at that and said, well, is there a way to avoid that so we can save on the charges and the time that's necessary to do a via in pad? And what we did is reconfigured it in such a way so that when we look at this, we actually have a solder mask that will cover over a portion of this pad and it will also cover over all of the vias in this pad so that when they do put down the paste, which is gonna be this purple area over here, I don't have to worry about this, the solder running into the vias and then running through the board. So these are the kind of innovations and things we need to think about 
when we're putting together footprints to ensure that the assembly operation can go as smooth as possible. And obviously in our libraries as well, in order to help assist with the documentation, we also have their assembly layers and we also have the courtyards as well. And we'll see that here in just a moment. So in fact, we'll click over here to our example. So what we did with all of our library components is we put them not only in the schematic, we also put them in the PCB as well. So you could see how they look as a result of good library practices. Here's an example of all the components laid out. If I go to single layer mode by holding Shift S and we jump over to the assembly top, for example, and we'll zoom in. I use the page up key. Let's try that again. We'll use our scroll, control, scroll, and we'll pan this over a little bit. So what you see over here are the results of us putting in information on a particular mechanical layer, which we call the assembly layer and we can use what's called a dot designator and you can see this in the library if you opt to obtain the library we'll be more than happy to provide that to you in addition to this over here we've got the designator and we also have an outline of the component itself and if this component or if the component has an orientation to it that's necessary we'll put some type of marker as well on this so the idea behind this is that by you just simply placing the parts down I've already created the assembly drawing I should not have to go in later on and draw this up because I've already got this in my library the same thing with the courtyards as well so if I click on the courtyards you can see all the courtyards and you may say well courtyards are kind of old-fashioned we do things with component clearances now in Altium why are we bothering with them because with these courtyards you can automatically provide the manufacturer's recommendations for clearances or clearances that you may need to put in there to make sure you can get your fingers in there so by doing that and just placing that courtyard down when you get your pile of components on the right side of the PCB when you're first starting your placements it's simply a matter of dragging those over and as long as they're not overlapping you've got a pretty good chance that you're not going to have any component clearance issues not only in terms of violating something in Altium but in terms of rework, in terms of test, in terms of getting your fingers in some place on that board. So whatever it is, those courtyards provide you the clearances that are necessary for those things that have to be done down the road. So that's our library here for you. And just the last one I'll show you is on our library. Not only do we have a library top page over here, but I'll, the last thing I'll show you is just this components page as well. We did lay these out so you can see the different types and forms that we're using. We also want to show you the style of how we display things. So for example, with our resistors, we want to show you the information that we were displaying, what we felt was necessary to display it. For our digital logic, the reason why we displayed it here is we want to show our method of handling discrete logic. We've seen in the past people forget the power on the ground. A lot of times they make it part E. We believe it ought to be part A. So we showed you an example here of how we would set this up. So with part A, we make sure that not only do we not forget it, but we can straddle it over any of the other parts here. And now it's it acts as one part, and I don't have to necessarily put it on part B. I could put it on any other part if I just so choose to use only a certain number of the discrete elements of a quad gate device. Well, that's the library in a nutshell. If you have any questions or if you'd like to obtain this library, please do contact us here at 9.connects.